and the colors and masks, you know, and I give them names like Machu Picchu, and I have to, I have to like research and be on Google trying to look for names. So that's a fun part because you still learn. And we had to finish these because I thought it was too much. I was having too much fun. I didn't have too many of those. But I just play with shapes and attitudes, and I try to think of the powers are going to be at the same time. Now, this is my favorite character, and it's called Pollita. It's like, I, I watched the movie Wizard of Oz. One of my favorite characters in, in the Wizard of Oz, which is the movie. You guys familiar with that? <laughs> was this porcelain doll. And she was like, oh, I'm fragile, and this, this, and that. And then she gets her way, and she's like, ha, <laughs> ha, She's just so like, like evil looking. And it's just that transition in the character. I thought it was really funny and, and, and attractive. So what if I make a little pollita thing? Something really cute that can have like this monstrous attitude when she's upset. So you're like, oh, wait, you don't want to piss her off. You don't want to kind of do that. And this brings up another really interesting point. When you see a character, you want to design thinking with human, flaws. Like, she's scared of something, or uh, she's forgetful. In this case, she loses her temper quickly, you know, and just become, it gives it more depth to the character, and there's more to write about. And this color, working with the color with the, the other guy, the grandpa, when he was young, you know, and he was just like this mostly gleaming, like, almost like Aztec uh, warrior in his olden days. You know how grandpas like to talk about the olden days, right? And then like, totally like, clueless, you know, and you put it in pieces of like this like cool thing, and you back in time, it's completely the opposite. It was just funny how he thought of himself. And so that's Kiki. Um, now, um, do you guys have projects of your own? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay, today, what I like to do is uh, less talking and more, you know, like showing you guys, like, Drawing and well, I can't stop talking. Sorry, <laughs> but um, we're, we're gonna grab those characters that you guys have, and and real quick since we have so much time, I'm glad. Much better be as fast as possible. But I'd like to go with each one of you guys. And you guys have artwork here that you guys can like put up on your screens or whatever things that you're doing. Is there any way that I can like uh, connect from? No, no, no. Yeah, we're, we're limited. Can, can I link from here to somebody's computer and draw for them? Uh, no, so um, if, we're not, if we're not using up too much time, what we can do, if you guys have like flash drives, and uh, we, can, I think we should just pick a couple, not do everybody. Oh yeah, okay. Just pick a couple to, to work on. I also think it would be really good for them because we're really at a beginner's level here. We should teach us how to start fresh, you know? Okay, I, I and, and And really build some different styles of characters maybe, just really how to, because I think a lot of us really don't even know where to start. We have okay. To research and then we're lost. Okay. So we'll do this the best way. On a sit drive, we can put like a uh, cluster around during break, whenever you guys like. And um, I'd like to, I'm going to show what turnarounds are like and expressions, some expressions that I have. And uh, and I want to grab those flash drives, if, oh, a flash drive, and put all your characters in there. And from there, you're going to learn so much. And I know sometimes we're really shy about our work, and, and we're really like, you know, this is kind of us. But we just have to kind of learn to let go of that. And, and just, like when you go to the doctor's, man, you know? And just put your kids in, and I'll be able to like show you things like uh, construction, and, and, and develop the character, help you guys develop the characters. And of course, you know what, what I do on your drawings is all for you guys, yeah? And, um, Maybe someone can, uh, does anyone have a flash drive? I'm going to set it up right now. Um, as a character designer, I'm going to talk about right now about, I asked earlier, turnarounds and expressions. My, my responsibility is to create a model pack. The model pack consists of, um, the model pack consists of turnarounds, expressions. Every now and then I do something that's called a construction sheet where I show how the character breaks down and how many heads tall it is. And I'll get into detail with all that. And then I do action poses. Action poses help me, for me, learn to draw the character and see who looks right in space, so it's good for an animator. Um, you know, I'm, I'm forgetting something. Let me, let
let me backtrack and go back to personalities again and people. I want to show you guys this once for uh, So I, I made a folder on this class track called Zelai Workshop. So if you guys have a character you want to see him work on, uh, save a JPEG out and drop it in the school. We'll start the class track right back here. If you have something you don't do, pass it. So far so good? Before, before we move on to the more technical stuff, let me go back and talk a little bit about character again in a way that's maybe more like psychology, in a psych psychology behind character. This is the best way for me, because I, I think it's right in the beginning stages, it's easy for me to show you something as simple about character, because a lot of times we're thinking about different character personalities and all the characters look the same. So this is helping me this has helped me to, bless you, to communicate how like I see characters or how like I break them into, into different groups. Um, Clubhouse, I did, and there for me there, there's a difference between 2D and 3D characters. 3D characters you have to be super like perfect. You cannot do cheats that may look cool in certain angles. You have to be like kind of like super or you do the angles like that. I have some terms that I can show you. So a little bit difference. Um, before we start personality characters, it's gonna help you guys more or less like lock into your character the character you wanna do. It's gonna help you too like observe people and perhaps yourself and try to like communicate that into paper. There are four fundamental character types. And this is something that it's been studied, it's a theory still, since like 1940s, even before that. Um, and it's called, there's four personality types. Over here we have the promoter. Or sanguinean. Who's familiar with this? Cool. I look like I know things. <laughs> Usually I know this in Spanish. And I took this time this morning to try to translate this into 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 English. 
the other promoter. Okay. And then uh, the promoter. This is a character who's like very kind of loud, outgoing. He tends to be perhaps more theatrical, full of energy, fun. He likes to party. He's late because he's too busy partying somewhere else. And his desk is going to be kind of messy, fun loving. He's going to be carefree, talkative, warm heart, hearted, optimistic. And um, do we have anybody here with those traits? It's loud. So part one. Two, three, yeah, I can tell, they're the most, the most. Yeah, there you go, they're loud at home, I mean, they can be in different, different places, but when you see them, like, out in the wild, they're just like, ah! with everything, right? So, that's the sanguinian. Then, on the other side, we have the controller. Controller person, who's choleric. Choleric would be a better word. Now, choleric... It's another person who is very outgoing, he's egocentric, impulsive, restless, aggressive, passionate. And his motto is, do it, your, do it now. Everything is there now, everything is like on top of things, you cannot prove them wrong, they always know have the right answer, they, take, they like to take credit for things. Their character is like very, perhaps like, you know, if you have to control the room, you would have to take into the, the, the role, right? Of being controlling things and be on top of things. They're usually leaders, good leaders. Who, who's the controller here? There you go. Okay. Okay, that's it. Come on, directors. Come on. Okay, go come out. Maybe not here, but in a while, you know who you are. Then we have the phlegmatic. Now, this is the nurturer. Easy going, they're uh, laid back, they, before they speak, they think about what they're going to say, they are warm, they are tolerant, says here, reasonable, thoughtful, they're, um, they're kind people, they're like mellow. Who's the phlegmatic here? There you go, cheers, you go, you go, <laughs> love trees, hook trees, and love life on the earth and everything. They care about other things that are going on in the world. They're okay. hippies. Yeah. 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 That's like, that's a sad, that's a promoter being phlegmatic, right? Like hippie, like you combine these two together. Okay, now, you have the other one, it's melancholic. This is analyst, analyst, it's an analyst. Okay, and now this guy, his desk is going to be perfect. Like everything is going to be lined up. So with some time, he kind of matches well. Like he he buttons his shirt right. As supposed to promote, promote is like whatever it works. This person, uh, whole life is uh, like uh, it's a little pessimistic. He thinks about the worst thing that can happen, which helps him have a little bit of control on things and. He doesn't really take takes a risk. He kind of watches the person ahead of him do it or not do it, see how he does, and then he does it. They're very safe and they're focused, serious, introvert, cautious, preoccupied, and uh, not very sociable, right? And by nature, we're all one of us, and it makes the whole world like we're all one of us. Who's the melancholic one? Right, 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 right. Okay, now this is where it gets really interesting and in how it applies to, for me for character design. When I'm trying a bad guy, now, now I'll draw a line over here. Extroverts are over here, introverts are over here. Okay, draw a line. Now, when I'm gonna make a bad guy, for the most part, I'm gonna make him extrovert. So he's gonna be controller, right? It's gonna be this guy. It's gonna be this guy. It's gonna be villain, right? But here's where it becomes interesting. 
even as who we are, I may be a controller, but this is where it changes. I can be controller promoter, or I can be controller melancholic, okay? And my opposite is going to be phlegmatic, chill, right? And it works in every way. So now, let's focus on the, on the bad guy. If I make a bad guy choleric promoter, he's going to be Dr. Evil from Austin Powers, <laughs> right? He's just going to be some boss, you know, and, and then he's going to blow up the world, but ah, he forgot the key or the something to make the bomb appear or whatever, explode. Which makes him someone who's very like, like disorganized, right? But still fun to watch. They make, a they make those kind of bad guys. But what if I'm to make a villain that's choleric, melancholic? Who's that gonna be? And the person that comes to mind for me is Hannibal Lecter, right? Yes, choleric, so but it's melancholic, quiet, cautious, plus everything. Yes. He guts you out, right? That's how. It, that's how. They become different. Okay. Now, same thing with the promoter. If it's a promoter controller, it's going to be something that's fun and everything, but it's a good leader still. Right? It's a leader to follow and it's fun, right? If I make a promoter phlegmatic, it's going to be a promoter who's like chill, but he's still really warm and cares about you. And he has, it goes one and two. And phlegmatic too. Phlegmatic, who's phlegmatic promoter. It's going to be phlegmatic who's like chill, laid back. Lazy, you know what I mean? Like it's a little bit of the other one, but it still talks to people. It still likes to come around and like talk to you, and it's uh, like a little bit outgoing. Phlegmatic melancholy is gonna be somebody who's completely chill, but still like very smart. Probably gets jobs doing taxes and stuff like that, or like working for Greenpeace, you know, and like kind of like the the, the what's the, the finances department, right? You have melancholic. Melancholic is a really interesting character. But the melancholic, when you mean melancholic, phlegmatic, you can think of someone who would make the difference between melancholic to phlegmatic and make a difference between melancholic to choleric. Melancholic choleric is going to be somebody who's really smart, really good businessman. He, this guy is always not thinking of interest. He's more like thinking about like, um, what is called like, uh, Real data is real data oriented. So now, this you can research more about online. So can I help you go in depth about it? This I think this is very important because now if you if I put, apply this formula or way of breaking down characters into the world or shows, I mean, we need the pool's gonna be who? Phlegmatic, easy going, chill, caring. Who's gonna be Tigger? Promoter. Right. Promoter, right? Yeah. What about the rabbit? No, um, uh, choleric. Choleric, right? Like, like this and like that and so. But I feel like I still haven't thought of them. Like, who do you want to call it? I don't know the characters. Eeyore. 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 Oh! Phlegmatic is Eeyore. Phlegmatic would be Eeyore. Remember Eeyore? Because even phlegmatic seems to look like a little bit like sluggish and chill, like that, like all oh, this. Yeah. But actually, melancholic is Eeyore too, because someone's like, oh, it's gonna rain, and like nobody knows me. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Is it uh, is it possible to combine the opposites like phlegmatic and color? Or uh, actually, those two. This is an interesting thing. And I was watching the day and. Um, my fiance tells me, look, everybody's dancing. One of them is like hyper, another one is, is like really chill when they dance. Like, you see all this in people, how they move. Like, usually when you see couples, these two marry each other because they're opposites. Like choleric and phlegmatic. If you think, if you think of your parents, who's the controller and who's the, the one that, they're like complete opposites, right? Yeah. And if they're not, they're funny. Together. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And then promoter and melancholic. They're completely opposite. One is like once in the clouds, like yeah, it's gotta be like this, and then wait a minute, you have to work and pay bills. Like, this one right here. Right? This one right here. So they're completely opposites. And if you look at if you study people long enough, you'll see that when you when you get older, you become kinda of like in the middle. Like other people that could be anything. And once you understand yourself and we're all growing, right? You become kind of middle, you, you're going to get promoted when you need to get promoted, 
You only control them when you need to be controlled, right? You only nurture when you need to be nurtured. But by nature, we're one, like that is ingrained in us. So we're talking about like creating a villain and hero situation. Like you could say that having them be opposite is not always a good thing. No, it's a good like thing because you learn from each other. The other person has uh, things that you don't have. Together, you make a good team. Oh, talk about hero villain though. Like if they're oh. opposed to each other. Uh, but I mean, I think of them like working together, like a choleric and a dramatic. But then if you have like your Doctor Evil and Austin Powers, Austin <coughs> Powers is chill, and then you have Doctor Evil on the other side, like. Like, do they work together too much? I mean... Kind of, yeah. Pr promoters are the most interesting ones. So I kind of, I like focus on promoter, and I break it over here. Promoters like that. Like, even if you break it this way, this feels like it's negative, and this is pessimist and optimist. Right? Like, the hippies are, And so what I, I put the good guy, I put him on promoter, because everybody wants to be a promoter. Like, if a, a party, everybody's like, oh, party sounds cool. Like, I kind of want to be a promoter. Like, you kind of want to be a promoter and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, right? But if you're a phlegmatic, you look at people that are promoters, get it? And you start looking at opposites because that's, you know, you kind of like, you kind of want to be that by nature, kind of thing. So that's how like the, the two kind of come back. But as far as good guy and bad guy, I can make a promoter bad guy too, you know? It's just how interesting, or how loud I want to make them. I tend to go here because they're more loud. And these two more loud. These kind of little introverts, so they kind of hide. So I make them supporters like a sidekick or something like that. But I keep on mixing, I keep on experimenting, see how they look, because where they come from, who they are, how old they are, plays a, a lot of uh, factors in creating a character formula. But that you do it in your head. You know, you think about it all the time. So this kind of helps you identify the four group types. So when you design them, like going back to this, you see, You can see it right there. Who, who's the melancholic? Um, this is the melancholic. 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 This is the like the door, and at least that's how I like paint. Because you see it in their face. Like a phlegmatic is coming like this, their face can be like chills. Even their body gestures can be like, oh, just want to lay back, so let me catch that. Nah. Mm -hmm. Jamal is always, always ready to attack. It's like, you know, Testament is always watching his guard, like, kind of like, mm, I know I know what's going on. You know, all this is going to happen. This dude is like egocentric. He's like, oh, I gotta fix things. I can do better than you. I wanna take credit for things, you know, but I'm so little, like, ah. Oh. He's in his face. It's more like that. And then, nurture would be who? They all have a little bit of everything, but by, by like. Jackie? Who? Okay. He is, but like, yes, is would be that guy. He'll lick you, he's like a puppy, he's nurtured, he wants to take care of you, he's innocent, you know what I mean? Like, well, at least that's how I'm trying to think. And then Joaquin is who? Promoter. Promoter, yeah, he's like, ah, like, we're ready, ready, ready to do things, ready to go, where we're going, we just eat, we just do that. But when it tends to, 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 to be in action, he becomes protector, he becomes a leader, he becomes a leader. What is the best method uh, to go with characters who basically like do not look as they seem? Because that is a theme in animation. Like for example, uh, yeah, yeah. one show that you're familiar with, uh, Phineas and Ferb, uh, my favorite cartoon. Um, um, like the main antagonist is Doofenshmirtz, but we know that he's not a controller because he's always failing in every episode. And he, but he also like you know he has this this life where he cares about his daughter, and at the same time you know he's living off his wife's alimony checks. <laughs> <laughs> Like that's that's the depth of the character when you develop when we have like different series to kind of develop them. But the writer or the guy who designs it kind of starts where, where somewhere, and then the writer makes it go on this strip in character development that happens over over time, you know. But yes, because we're all, all characters, you kind of want the characters to relate to everyone, 
But when you start from a design point of view, you kind of want to know what you're doing. So this is like the start point, then it develops into other things. Now, perfect example of a character that's very likable, like that, and has liberty, is Homer Simpson. <laughs> Homer Simpson is smack in the middle of that squadron. He can be like uh, angry and controlling all of this kind of business idea, and then buys a gun, and like, I don't know, whatever. But he can be really like, Nurture too, you know, he had a pet, uh, what's it, a lobster thing he had? That they got like, boiled to death and then he's eating it, like really sad, about it, crying about it. Remember that? And then, and then you have your boy, oh, the ladies in the with his toughy shirt, you know, and like, he like, does this like, this thing, what do you call that thing, I forgot what to say. It's, uh, you know, he's showing the football game and he took off your clothes. He's someone who would do that, you know? Yeah, he's drinking. He's drinking, yeah, that. <laughs> It was in my times, you never saw that kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh, and then he can be just pretty much all of them. Mm -hmm. Going, melancholic, and business plan, idea, like, mm -hmm. things. But that's why it becomes really rare, relatable to all of us. That's why we all like him. We can all relate to him. Okay, so. And so that's what a character is. Do you have any questions? Right? More or less is four. That's it. Draw a lineups, so you'll see them. Now in movies, you're gonna see who's who, and you'll be like, oh, that's how it is. And pretty much, another way of explaining it is, if we were doing theater here, we're a group of people that work for a theater company, right? We're doing shows, live shows. Is it recording? The you actors are gonna be who? Can you turn it back on a little bit? Right here? The promote, promoters, right? Act, look at me, look at me, center of attention, I can act. The bad guy, good it doesn't matter. They're gonna be on stage. Look at me. I'm not shy to be me. I'm really comfortable just the way I am. Now, who's gonna be the, the people in charge of lighting, make sure the sound is working, sound check, everything, the levels are correct, getting people in the place? Who's it gonna be? Exactly, gonna colleagues. Everything perfectionist. Things are gonna be, you're not gonna have phlegmatic like in the job. You fired a long time ago, but you forgot to do plug something in. Uh, so that's how nature kinda like, yeah, um, this is designed to be that way. You know? So everybody coexists. It's more like a survival thing. And then, who's going to be the one that's like, cut! Like, oh, that was great. Like, the credit for that. Yeah, for me, it's going to be the director, right? Yeah. The director is going to be like, cut! Okay, time to go. Play check. That's my idea. That's great. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> right? Make sure for everyone. Now, Who's good? The phlegmatic is kind of hard to figure out. The phlegmatic is going to be the audience. They're moved by the performance. Oh, that was great, fantastic, right? <laughs> so that's kind of a way of like illustrating character colors. And then you combine it with another one, and another one, and you get a little bit of diversity. And if you look around, it's us. Like, look at your friends. How would you sell a house to a player? Over here, you can uh, add an extra house over here. You can run. <laughs> Like your business over here, and how would you sell it to like a, a Sanghinian? Oh, you got parties over here, the neighbors don't mind, they don't care. You can party until seven, your friends stay in here, it's a good gathering area for you to, to like, you know, host people, right? What about a, a phlegmatic? Oh, look at the kitchen, the kitchen is awesome, the fireplace, the quality time with your family, perfect for kids. The, the school is like uh, two blocks, three blocks, whatever, it doesn't matter. But they're sold, right? But uh, melancholic. The freeway is just half a mile away. Values and like, whatever are going up by 11%. And I don't really know what to do. But that's how you can allow you to communicate things. It happens all the time. It's character, people, it's simple. We're drawing here, but it's people. Like what we're doing, it's human. Making relatable characters, yes? Okay, now it's going to be a lot easier to understand other parts when you see lineups. Oh, that's that character. Oh, this is the character. This is how you change my character so you can relate to each other. These two fight. These two get along. This two get, and it helps you figure out these things. It's like super basic psychology that you get in depth into other things too and, and our, but it's super simple, like uh, visual language. Now, as a character designer, now let's go on to uh, what time is it? 12.56? Oh my god, it's only been an hour? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Let's go. Show must go on, so go on. Um, let me show. What was the you asked earlier to show what? 
Oh, it just, if you can demo some uh, characters from the beginning to, like, uh, just starting with the shapes and, you know. Oh, I got a perfect example for that. Yeah. Um, for Lion Guard, which is what I'm working on, um, I want to show you this in particular. It's called Cave Paintings. Do you remember that in Lion Guard? Um, is this work that um, is on the DL? Or no, yes, DL. DL uh, download, right? Yeah, you can 